Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap. And today I'm gonna to be playing with the papers called A Mother's Love. It's a paper collection that's exclusively available through Country Craft Creations. And you can buy it right at countrycraftcreations.com. So I am going to be using the eight by eight paper collection. Uh, this is a paper collection also comes in a 12 by 12 size, but this is the one that I chose to use today. And you can see that it comes with some two by two cut aparts and then also the ephemera pieces that I used a circle punch on some of these things, fussy cut others, and then just did some straight line cutting of some of the others already. And then you have these lovely images. And I already did a walkthrough of this paper collection previously. So just take a peek back at my prior videos on my channel and you can take a look at all the different uh, papers that are available here. But for today, I went ahead and picked up a few manila envelopes. I just got these from my big box store. It came three in the package, and I decided I wanted to use these and start with it in my paper trimmer, cut off the top section with the clasp, and then cut off the bottom section so that it became a tube. Then what I did is I went ahead and folded up the bottom. I have them turned sideways here, but you can see when I glue each of the sides, I end up with pockets. Um, and each of these are inked already, so hopefully you can see that this is gonna become a pocket and then you also have the tube function of the page. I'm going to be folding them in half and using them so that I have uh, three signatures and they ended up being about 10 and three quarters of an inch in width and then six and a half inches in height once I folded up the bottom. So I do have three of these and yeah, I just have one turned upside down, but I have three of these. I already did the inking. I used Vintage Photo for the inking. And what I'm going to do next is kind of just show you that I went through the paper collection and I put some papers together that I thought I would kind of use together in each of the signatures. So I have basically three stacks of paper and I think one has a, one more sheet than the other but nonetheless um, this is what I'm going to go with and that way I find it's easy to just start cutting and gluing down papers. So here I did the gluing onto the manila envelope and then the other papers you can see uh, that in this case, on the fronts of the pockets, I have a little bit of extra space. I'm planning on putting some lace down there. Uh, but I want to show you this. It was a happy little accident that I came across. I wanted to take advantage of this image in what would be the center of the signature. And what I want to do is not fold the image in this case. So I'm going to offset the paper over to the right so that the right side of this page is longer than the left will be. And that way I get to see the whole entire image on that page. Now this is going to end up being my center and it's not going to matter, but I wanted to point it out. What I did here on this page is fold up the bottom of this sheet so that I get an extra pocket. And then I started playing around with where do I want to fold this one as well. Um, and what I noticed is that I was ending up with two sheets that I was going to fold and they were going to end up being exactly the same length just about. And I didn't like that. 
So what I decided to do is flip that second one over in the opposite direction. And then when I put this down, you can see that I have one long side of one sheet on one side and then a short side on the other. And then I noticed, oh, if I go ahead and glue these sides, I'll end up with another tuck spot. So I'm um, planning on doing that. I also get on this the same type of thing happening on the opposite side here. So I like this. It was one of those things, it's just a happy accident. I'll be able to stick a tag in there as well and have the tuck spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down and create that pocket. You'll notice that I have two lines here. That's just because I was playing around with the folds and trying to figure out what the length was but I think, you know, this is just a matter of a personal preference, how you want your pages to be. And I'm just going to go ahead and burnish that down. And then I will do the other side, uh, go ahead and glue it down as well. And then I will end up with the fold still right in the middle of the page here and I get to view that entire beautiful image. So the next thing is foraging your stash, just like Sally says to do, go through your house and find what you think you might want to use here uh, that will go with it. So I have some antique lace, I have some little tiles, I have uh, some little buttons and little thingamabobs here. Um, I'm planning on doing some, you know, maybe painting of those to make it the right color. I use books and here's a book that I liked. I picked up this specifically for junk journaling. Um, so I could take advantage of some of those images. I went through some of my other pre-made ephemera pieces, I'll call it. So just snippets from older collections that I made little collages of. Um, odds and ends that I figured might look good on the front cover maybe, uh, that the, the uh, coloring uh, might go well with what I have in this paper. Um, there's just some, you know, scraps that I'm using, different envelopes. Here's some coffee dyed papers. I might do some stamping on some of these little paper bags. Don't forget to look for your embellishments. So see what you have. I think this might be pretty cool to use. I'm even thinking of doing something like this. So putting a frame around some of those things. Um, this is good to do. So I also want to point out that I, like I mentioned, I pick up a couple of books that I try to use in my junk journals. I have some papers that were given to me uh, from a good friend of mine and I try to incorporate those as well. I love the feel of those old papers. Um, they are very delicate. I also grew up watching Little House on the Prairie so I usually try to go through uh, one or two of these books and find a page that has to do with the junk journal um, theme that I'm, I'm making. So here in this one, uh, it talks about some of the clothing and the colors of the material that's being used. And then in the picture itself, it even has uh, some, some thread and uh, sitting there on the chair. So anyway, I thought that was beautiful image and I wanted to go ahead and incorporate it into my book. Then I also have this old book, uh, uh, children's, you know, things to do, craft to do. And I pulled out some of the pages from there. Um, patchwork fun, I thought was cool. And then a wooden loom. So anyhow, I just wanted to remind you when you're foraging, look through your old books, see if you can find ways to, um, you know, work on, on including some of that stuff into your junk journals because it has special meaning to you. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to start going through each of these papers and I just use my pencil a lot when I'm doing paper 
uh, piecing or paper uh, folding, as you can see here, or cutting even. Um, I go through and mark it with a pencil a lot of times, and then I will put that mark in my paper cutter, and that's how I make a determination on where I want to cut. It goes a lot faster for me than measuring out each and every page, um, and it just works better. So here you can see I'm doing some of that folding. I'm just trying to figure out where exactly do I want each of the pages to lie so that they're not all exactly the same length. It will give a little bit of uh, dimension here once I place some of the ephemera pieces that I have from my foraging or laces or anything on, on the paper. And so I'm just trying to figure out where do I want to incorporate some of those other uh, sheets of paper from the books that I took apart so that I get an interesting look to the patterns on here. And once I have all of those pages put together uh, for each of these signatures, I'm just using a paper clip, or a paper clip, a, um, a clothes pin in order to hold all those pages together. Um, you can see here, I'm, I'm using that beautiful image, Norman Rockwell image. And I want to make sure that I can fold it so that it is a pull out page and you get the full effect without cutting off that gorgeous image. So now I have all three of them put together. These are my signatures and I am ready to do some stitching on them. And because what would this be without <laughs> using my uh, handy dandy sewing machine? But I'm going to do some of that and then I will be stitching them together uh, right down the center and stuffing the pockets uh, with some of my ephemera pieces that I forged for. So this is just a quick run through and um, I hope you're enjoying this so far. Stay tuned for the next video where I will talk through some of the stitching uh, that I've done in order to um, attach it to my lay flat binding method of Tamra's for the outer cover. And then we will get going with the ephemera pieces being added on. Thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.